Thank you. Mrs. Benko, could we have the roll call, please? Mrs. Breton? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. Deshaux? Here. Mr. DeLauder? Here. Mr. Eifert? Here. Mr. Emig? Mrs. Herman? Here. Mrs. Maley? Here. Mr. Rahauser? Here. Eight members are present today. Thank you. Uh, first up under presentations, Mr. Stefanovich from the township and Ms. Oswald. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this evening I want to thank Laurel for coming along. Uh, we have an update to uh, the Eagle Park plan that I thought would be good to uh, share with everyone. There's a few slides, and she's extremely knowledgeable on, on uh, everything that's happening with that. So actually, at this point, I'm, I'll turn it over to, to uh, Laurel to go over the few things we have here. Okay, so we have two different plans we provided you. Um, the pretty picture you see before you is referred to as the concept plan um, done by our landscape architect, which shows the full um, plan completion. Uh, it was done by a landscape architect, so therefore it didn't necessarily take into account all of the engineering, grading, and things like that uh, that need to occur with a property. Uh, so when we applied, to begin with, the first phase of the, the um, project involves three different sub-projects. If you are at the high school at all, you have felt the shake of um, blasting occurring right now while the sewer line is getting relocated out of the floodplain area. Um, that is the first step in the project to be followed by a floodplain restoration project, which will actually take all of the sediment that's occurred over time out of the floodplain and reposition it up on the flat area that will become the field, um, which will be real nutrient rich for bringing in good grass uh, for that for that purpose. Um, the floodplain work is actually being funded by a Growing Greener grant from DEP at a, a cost of about $1.5 million. We were fortunate enough to get a grant for, for the full amount. Um, so that's the second phase and that's going out for bid in February and should begin by late spring, early summer. That floodplain work would then conclude by the end of summer, beginning of fall, and we hope to have phase one of the park improvements out for bid and completed by the summer of 2021. Those improvements are detailed in red, that's what in the red dotted line. So that is mostly a pavilion, um, some walking trails, an outdoor educational center on the township side of the, the property and there will also be on the bump out on the school side where there's like a little bit of green that sticks up beside the tennis courts. There, there, there will be flat stone spaces that would be conducive for uh, environmental education as well where they, the students could sit on those flat stones and write or do projects. Um, but the space that is below the bridges at the top of the screen is the outdoor education space that's on the school or on the actual park property and that'll be um, like stumps and logs that are placed uh, for for educational purposes the, the students will be able to sit there and do their work um, if you turn if we go to the next slide this is what we applied for the grant for in the dotted line but once we got the engineers to actually look at the grading we decided to change the plan a little bit and we instead moved to keeping all of the trail on the township building side of the creek. So it didn't make sense to run a trail across the creek and have it end and everybody have to turn around and come back. So we, we ran it in a loop um, and that loop starts in a parking lot that'll be off the back of our building and loops around so that is really the main change uh, to the plan. And we did get a $250,000 DCNR grant for the park improvements. So um, we have, we're working on additional phasing and a different uh, additional financing for the rest of the park improvements. And we'll be working on it for the 
several years to come to, to get the other park improvements uh, completed. But you will see, pretty much, you will see work going on there for the next year and a half, at least, under this phase. So any questions that we can answer about that one? So as of right now, there looks like we're going to plan uh, two educational areas as opposed to uh, the original that which only had one. So hopefully that'll, that'll help all. And then the, the path going around will it just will uh, be good as far as people making it the whole way around the park. There's still an intention to bring a, a pathway or a driveway in on the back side of those practice fields now that we currently have below the high school. I think there was some discussion about getting some sort of access in uh, along that fence. There, there's to be a bridge that comes across, which would be an additional phase. There, you see the bridge um, that's located near the tennis courts. That bridge would have to go in. The abutments will be going in as part of the floodplain work, but the actual bridges, nobody would fund that from the three um, entities that we got funding from, so we have to plan for those bridges. But the actual abutments that the, the bridges will sit on are being paid for by the Grand Greener Grant. How about so the other the other side though, like over towards the alley? Um, no, there, there's I, no. Well, that's not our property, so we didn't plan to do that. But I know there was. We we were kind of thinking that the school might be interested in something like that, but we we couldn't put that in on our plan because it's not our property. So, but the the bridge is meant to connect with your walkways that you have associated with the tennis court so that the students can come across the bridge to get access to the park. Thank you. Okay, and then the, the uh, other item, I made a copy of a budget message that was done by Laurel that's in our uh, Dover Township uh, newsletter. And the, the uh, message here is excellent uh, summary of what's all planned for the township for this coming year. So uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you didn't notice it in your, in your township newsletter, take a look at this, and it goes over very well all of the items that we're planning to do. Uh, we, like you, are going to be very busy in the, in the coming years. And one I did want to highlight, and I know that I take it there's been some meetings already, uh, Intermediate Avenue is, is on the list as far as uh, being repaved and uh, get it back to a, a lot better shape once the, once the uh, school work is done. Uh, so I know there's some work on, on that. Our, our uh, sanitary sewer system is still gonna have uh, a lot of work going on to it in, in quite a few areas in the township. Uh, we are uh, moving ahead with the uh, north of the borough, uh, we call it. Uh, where sewer and water is going to be going up that way, and we're hoping to provide some more resources for people. Uh, and then a couple other little things here. Uh, the, I, already, I just mentioned there that the water system is going to go along with the sewer up, up to the north end of the town. And uh, uh, one item that was mentioned here, just for, uh, for information, uh, the fire department will be ordering a new, their plan is to order a new engine uh, to be delivered next year. They're trying to stay up to date with their equipment too, both for, for uh, uh, steady equipment, but also this does help everyone's insurance rates and everything that the, uh, the whole area has, has appropriate equipment. So actually, it's a little bit old right now, but it is very well kept and uh, doing a good job. But with the current engine being a 2001, uh, it's time to to um, move forward and, and uh, get a new one in 2021. So if there's any other questions that we can help you with or. Thank you for that update. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up under presentations, we have our middle school bid results with Mr. Badia from Crabtree and uh, Mr. Nelson's help at some point, I'm sure. <laughs>
Thank you. Uh, so uh, in terms of an update, we're going to summarize the bids that were originally received with our first go-around. As everyone is aware, uh, we were unsuccessful in obtaining an electrical bid uh, on our first go-around. Uh, this is a summary of uh, the results of the original bid uh, December 17th for general construction where ECI construction uh, submitted a low bid. And we've highlighted in yellow just some discussion items regarding uh, potential alternates and deducts that were included in the original contract for consideration. Next is the HVAC contract, also submitted uh, December 17. Uh, Myco Mechanical, uh, also involved with the uh, previous, uh, the current high school project. And again, a few items highlighted in yellow for uh, consideration. Uh, last contract originally received on the 17th for plumbing construction. Uh, again, Myco Mechanical uh, for both contracts is the low uh, base bidder. So shortly after uh, not having received an electrical bid, uh, we were able to uh, solicit two other bidders um, and Midstate Mechanical uh, is the low bid. Uh, that base bid number is about $200,000 higher than the original estimate. However, it is consistent with um, the cost increase we've seen across the other prime contracts. So uh, it's fairly consistent. And again, in yellow were some preliminary recommendations that we discussed with the administrative team uh, for board consideration on what uh, possible deduct alternates might be considered. So here's a bid summary of uh, the base bid um, of each of the four prime contracts at 6.9 million. Uh, if the items in yellow were accepted, um, not a significant number. However, uh, that does result in a savings of about 153,000 uh, to bring the total bids at 6.7 million. Our estimate for the construction, uh, which these bids are consistent with, was 5.7. The post-bid assessment is after the bids were initially received with the general HVAC and plumbing contract, we start talking to the contractors about possible costs, uh, other cost savings um, that would be issued in the form of a, a change order after contract execution. And there you can see there was a, a dollar value of appro approximately 65000 Again, not significant, and in our opinion, the value of those savings was not worth the work that was shown in the contract documents for uh, a number of the educational spaces. That leaves a, a, a total delta of approximately uh, $1 million um, for the middle school renovation project. In terms of the schedule, um, at the, uh, later in the agenda, there's an action item to uh, approve the bids. We now have four uh, prime contracts uh, necessary to proceed. If uh, the board elects to proceed, we feel comfortable with the schedule and the three major phases um, uh, to begin work shortly after contract award. So that's kind of a quick overview, um, concentrating on the electrical bid that we hadn't originally received. Um, these were slides and if there were some references for areas of construction uh, that were part of the uh, post-bid assessment and deducts. So if there are any questions or comments pertaining to uh, the action item or the, the electrical bids received or any of the bids received to date. A little question regarding the electrical bid. There was a pretty significant difference between the two, the two bids there. Do we know much about the company that was the low bid there? Do we have any kind of history with them or have you worked with them in the past on other projects? Uh, we have worked with that firm on a number of projects and school projects and had su a successful result. Um, Dave, I don't know if you're familiar with No, I've never worked with either one of those. Uh, I know uh, uh, Midstate or Oreg. Oreg is, uh, they were the electrical contractor on Middletown. So we went to see Middletown uh, if you went along on the tour. Um, and Midstate's done can't remember. They've done, they've done quite a few schools. Midstate is actually a s division or subsidiary of ECI, sort of like Lobar Electric, Lobar GC, so they're sort of a sister company. So we're, we're comfortable with that.
Could you walk through the deduct alternates again, $153,000 and what each of those are and if maybe our administrators could talk about those a little bit and their feelings behind some of that? Sure. Maybe pull back. So what you'll see too in the scope of the work for something like you know the science labs, for instance, you'll see corresponding alternates in uh, most of the contracts. So uh, GC4 was a science lab um, demolition work, and then uh, six was the other item identified to uh, do some work in the band storage area. Again, the dollar values were. Um, you know, 12,700 for a deduct. Again, if it's shown in parentheses, um, that's identified as a deduct from the, the base bid. Uh, and the last item was um, only a $4,000 uh, value to be deducted from the contract. Jen, do you want to go back to oh, the I'm sorry. last one? Um, the two in yellow here that we talked about mm -hmm. not doing the Science Lab Peninsulas, I want to say, what, there are six, six of them? In yeah, the there's six in each room. Each they room. they sort of stick out at a funny angle. Yeah, from the side, <laughs> and you know, the science they functional oh, issue. Right. And we, they're built ins. We, we struggle to get twenty five or so desks in the room with those right. peninsulas so sticking out. We were going to kind we we were saying we could live with them not coming out, but we would struggle with 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 the desks okay. going in. Um, and the middle school didn't feel they needed them. They used lab tables, so they didn't feel they needed them. And the en ensemble classroom and band storage, that those were the that was the band storage that we were going to remodel. So the instruments were outside of outside. the classroom, and now in in a separate room. So we talked about we could build some storage in the classroom, in the band room, to put the storage. And rather than doing it in a separate room. But it's not a huge savings. It's not a huge savings. Right. right. And it might might cost you it probably costs me more nearly the same, if not more. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, to do it ourselves. Right. Absolutely. Okay, Jen. So I have a question, a quick thing. Uh, about the science lab. So if we wouldn't do anything with them, how that that'll have a direct impact then on the educational Yes. It'll be an educational impact to the students then right. in that classroom. Right. It's very it's very tight. If you put 20, 20 I don't know if anybody here is from high school right now, but if you put 25 or so desks in there, it's it's tight. I mean, you, there's no outway. You can't get around. Um, we dealt with it for a while, but for this age group of kids, I'm not so sure. In my opinion, I'm not so sure it would work well. The on that last slide there with the gymnasium air conditioning in there, you're saying that was not part of the original base bid, that was in a right. sort of separate. Right. And, and so we're looking at, so what, what was the previous slide then that had the adding 22,000 on it? What, what did that represent again? Well, there's that, the, if you take, let's just say you took the gymnasium air conditioning, you would have to take GC1 on the general contractor, you'd have to take on the HVAC contractor, you'd have to take the electrical. same on the, the electrical. electrical, and more than likely, I'm not so sure, maybe the plumbing due to the fact of getting condensate water away. Um, but you would end up taking all, if you take one alternate, you have to take all four of them for that, for the same scope, for that item. same right. scope item. Um, so like on, here we see gymnasium air conditioning for HVAC, it's another 190,000. Um, that's, that's more the equipment, that's the installation of it, where under the GC it would be the cutting of the roof, the putting of the roof curb in, um, if there's any structural changes that have to be made to the roof to support it, that kind of thing. Uh, and then of course electrical is getting the electric power, power to it um, and the controls and such for it. I don't know. I don't know that there was a plumbing on that one, but I it could be. There was. Um, so as it stands, the ones in white right now are part of the. Well, the gymnasium air conditioning would not be. That would be an addition. If you want to do that, we have to add that onto the current price. 
Yeah, if you look at that second column under where the title is base bid, if it is an add, you would need to add that uh, to add it. that alternate. And again, the corresponding HVAC and electrical. If is it a deduct, and you accept it, it will be taken out of the contract. So to reduce the cost, we focused on the deducts. Yes. Okay. So the original, the original quote or the original um, slide that you sh showed us those numbers, they include the additions. They include the deducts. They include the, the deducts, the deducts. Not, the add, not the additions. Not, not the additions. Right. Just the deducts. Right. Yeah, to keep to keep the cost down, uh, the deducts were evaluated. 153 is included in that, but you're saying the six point the six point seven there does not or six point nine does not include those additions? No. Correct. Does not. And we after we I know our, we the big discussion about getting Aaron and Jim was huge. You have to realize we're not going to have graduations there anymore. Right. We're right. not going to have as many students. Right in that in that gym. hardly anything going on in the gym, other than gym class. And and generally, when you get into the hotter months, unless it's raining, they're outside, outside. anyway. Right. So, <clears throat> uh, probably under the HVAC contract, the big one is the uh, boilers. You yeah, replacement of the cooling tower. Uh, was an ad uh, and then re uh, deduction of the boilers that was where I, th I suggested we use the two that are in the intermediate school currently transfer them to the high school and reutilize re re two of them um, instead of buying three new ones we would only buy two new ones and reuse the two that are a little bit smaller in there gives us a little more flexibility too if you think about it um, They only run when they have to, so if we don't need the big ones, maybe only one of the small ones will run on a day when it's not real cold. Or so am I understanding this right? So, so tonight when we're voting, any of the ones that are additions are not being included right. in this vote. No. Right. We're just deciding whether we want to keep the ones in yellow. In yellow. Or not. To reduce costs. Right. Right. Yeah, our focus. Okay. Right. And if we, if we knock out the yellow ones, we're going to save $153,000. That's right. all you're going to save. Yeah. Right. That's all we're going to save. And if we try to do these things in yellow five years down the road when the apps, like when the boiler goes or when, you know, what we decide, okay, we need to fix this or fix that, the cost is going to be probably significantly right. higher. Uh, if I had to put a number on it, and, I, and you say four to five years down the road, that 150000 is going to cost you probably in excess of 500000 at least double. So the motion tonight, um, when you accept the bids, it's a very long motion. In the first part of the motion, um, I did say without selecting the deduct alternates. So that means that they'll stay in that base bid amount. We won't take that 153,000 of right. the total of all those out, okay? Nor will we approve the other additions right. on the all correct. Right. Right. Correct. So you're you are, but those weren't in. They're not in the the base motion bid, to begin right. with. The, the base bid to begin with. Okay. So you're not approving air conditioning. You're not approving the the, the cooling tower, mm -hmm. the replacement of the water heater tanks and pumps. Um, air conditioning some of that stuff yes okay. so the items that are in white then on our on our list that we had are any of those also items that down the road are going to really need to be addressed that you know are going to be an additional cost I mean should we should we reconsider those as well or no the, those items are <coughs> identified in the summary sheet that uh, are identified as post bid assessment um, if you can jump back another, or I think forward another slide or two. Sorry, Corporal. Yeah, I think maybe to zoom back out, because of the project coming in higher than the estimate, okay. 
the, okay. working with the administrative team in our, our office, we did not look to add any more costs to the add alternates. We focused on evaluating the deducts, and I think your question, sir, is pertaining to the, some of the potential post-bid assessments of some uh, change orders um, that we had discussed earlier. Um, they are, that scope is in, as you accept the base bid, they are included. Um, we thought the dollar value for the scope of work was not commensurate. So again, it's a price issue. Um, the, the post bid assessment items are in the base bid scope. Um, you could, the board could entertain that at a later point in time, uh, but the alternates need to be accepted or not at the time of the award of the contract. So they're two kind of separate entities, if you will. Does that, does that answer your question? I'm, I'm still a little bit fuzzy on the on the things in white here, the the, the things that are the additions. Um, I was thinking that they were included in with that yeah. initial amount. So you're saying if we do not approve them tonight, then they're not, not included. We, we can't go back and add them later. The add alternates. That is correct. At that price. At that correct. You could always go back and add them, but then the price wouldn't be what shows on here. Right. Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, okay. This locks the contractor into that pricing. Yeah. So the question that I have over all of this, um, number one, we're like a million dollars over budget. Uh, where? Where are, we, where are we going to come up with that money? And is that going to put us into um, financial difficulty that would could result in a, a, a tax increase that we were not aware of or planning for? So currently, we have about $13.1 million sitting in um, capital reserves that we had moved money over to um, to fund capital projects. Um, it's, it's been great that we could do that. Um, we did, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've been talking a lot tonight. Um, we, we did um, say that we would put $6 million towards the middle school and high school project of our cash that goes towards the debt payments. So of that 13.1, you would have about 7.1 left. Um, in addition to that, there are some other D10 items that we will need to take out of that pocket of funds um, to the tune of maybe around approximately um, $750 to $1 million. So that leaves us with about $6.1 million to be left in the capital reserve fund. Um, that money, uh, you know, would, would need to be... Um, we would need to make sure that we keep enough money there to plan for future capital projects down the line um, as some of our buildings such as live age a little bit and you know their infrastructure start to deteriorate a little we will need to look at maybe some renovations over at live um, so that's that's where we have the pot of money that we would take this extra million dollars from so we could if you take that there, we would still have a little bit of reserve left that, that should something come up, we could cover those costs. You are as correct, well. yes. So then I, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's, that's okay. Go ahead, I'm just finish. thinking out loud here. So I, to me, then, I think, and, and while I don't want to say that, 100, I don't think you're correct, I'm saying the same thing. $153,000 is a lot of money, but for, with the scope of this, this whole project, I, I, I just wonder if, if we are overthinking this as far as in trying to save $153,000. I mean, down the road, if you were to make some of those improvements, that's <coughs> where I would take those funds from. And as they said, I mean, they said it's probably doubled if we would do that mm -hmm. in the future. Well, and I think we talked a little bit about it. I can't remember if it was in committee or earlier 
at the fact that <coughs> even in the amount of time since we started talking about the project in general, uh, if we would have started right away and been able to do everything right away, we would have saved, you know, millions of dollars. So, I, I mean, the cost is going to cost. I'm, I'm, I'm fearful of the cost, you know, especially with demand of construction and, and the fact that it's, you know, just exponential. Uh, I mean, I agree, 153,000 is, you know. It makes, makes me choke. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> Not to scoff at it, but you know, when you're looking at the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> and just just to wrap my head around this, now the items that are in yellow here really do have an impact on the potential education of the students. So I guess those are the things that you know, if, if it's 153,000, that's a lot of money. But if it's impacting the students, maybe that's not a wise deduct so you know in this in the scheme of you know the whole project 153,000 is a small portion of that but it could have a bigger impact on the kids so I would think it, it might behoove us all to go forward and keep those in that project what I didn't realize was the things that were in white were not part of it. I thought that was, I was already in part of it, too. too. Yeah, I, I did, too. I thought that, too. Yeah, so I missed that. We, bro we broke them out like that so that we could get a base bid, and then if, you, if we came in really low, we could add it. That's really why we did it that way, rather than go in with them already there and then have to back them out. And once we vote tonight, we can't add them back in. Can't add them back. You can do them as a change order, but it won't be for the dollar Same amount dollar, that we're right. seeing now. It would be for a, a lot more. It, I well, I don't know that. I mean, it could be less. Could be less. Could be more. Deduct, you don't know that. Could be more if it's an ad. Right. So, so in essence, there will be no air conditioning in the gym. Is that what you're no. saying? No. no air conditioning in the gym. Um, what are do would, do you mind like taking a minute to go down over those ones that are in white that that you don't feel is are needed, just so sure. we can understand if we get a question. What aren't we doing? Because I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to fix that. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so. Uh, general construction to start with. There you go. Right there, that's good. So, the, yeah, the gymnasium air conditioning we didn't include. That was an ad. We wanted to do it. Um, and I, I know we talked about the shelter lock assemblies or we're going to put them on all classrooms we're just not going to put them on the assembly spaces uh, like the gym the auditorium um, cafeteria I think yeah, kind of your large space. group areas what's a shelter lock uh, that's where um, teacher has a teacher administrator has a key fob mm -hmm. they can lock their door from anywhere if they're in the back of the room, as long as the door's shut, they can lock it. Um, um, police officer or principal or safety officer could lock the entire building with pushing one button. So if we had an intruder, it wouldn't be, oh my gosh, everybody got to lock their door, and you know, you might be somewhere else and don't know if your door's locked or not. You could lock it from where, wherever you're at in the building. So if they're all in the gym. We just the didn't put them in. We didn't put them in the big assembly. The real spaces. large occupancy spaces, like so the gym. they can't be. So you're saying that in an emergency they wouldn't be locked down. No. Like, no. So they but wouldn't you, be locked down automatically. They wouldn't be locked down automatically. Go, you'd still you, be able to lock. You could still lock them down. They just wouldn't do it automatically. Right. That's a little scary. <laughs> we don't have it at all now in any I know in any that, anywhere but if we're gonna, <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, okay. So. It's very expensive. I mean, you can see just the, the assembly spaces, it's 200,000. That's just on the right. general. That doesn't include the electrical. Um, so that's very expensive. And then the next one down is band room instrument storage. That was to add all new instrument storage in, in the current instrument storage band room, uh, which we, we decided we weren't we didn't think we needed to do that. That's around 71, almost 71,000. Um, and then the last one on this list is, uh, it's a deduct uh, 
um, was uh, our goal was here to bring more light into the cafeteria to put larger window on the side that goes towards the football field and then where we have that sort of lobby in front of the cafeteria is to put some large openings there with uh, garage doors so we could open that up and make it more open le less like a you know an enclosed room so we didn't recommend taking that deduct but it's there um, which means we kept it we kept we kept those that doors way. in there. Yeah, we kept that. Right. We kept those That'll doors. That'll remain. In there. That'll remain. And the doors, I mean, when I say garage doors, are I don't do it justice. They're not really garage doors. They're fire yeah, resistant doors. Larger and with some transparency. Right. Yeah. So it's not really a garage door. Open that room a bit. Um, and then for uh, again, if you go we're in the mechanical now, the HVAC side. Um, of course the big one up are hundred and ninety thousand for our gymnasium air conditioning. Uh, and then the next big one is uh, 357,000 <clears> to replace the cooling tower. Um, cooling tower is in pretty good shape. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to have a new one. Um, I, I hazard to guess it's gonna go another 10 years at least. Uh, it's something that can be easily transferred in and out. It's on the roof, you pick it up with a crane, you, you unbolt it, you drop it, you put another one up there and you hook it up, you go. It's not a lot, it's not, you're not in the building, you're on the roof, it's not a big deal. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think we've got a good number of years left in it. So, um, and of course the boilers we're recommending to take, I can't read the bottom, ensemble, classroom and band storage, that's um, to get rid of some small, small rooms and make them one big room to, for storage. So uh, I think we can probably handle, you know, could handle that a little differently. Um, uh, replacement of the water heater, tanks and pumps. Uh, that's again, uh, that's like almost $300,000. It's not huge to put water heater and pumps in um, and a holding tank, it's not a huge thing. We could do that almost on the fly. So it's a lot of money. I think you can probably do it yourself cheaper than that. Um, and then again, this is the electrical. So you can see we, it's uh, 30, almost 32, almost $33,000 for the air conditioning for the electric. And then the shelter lock assemblies are another 60,000 um, if you wanted to do for the assembly spaces. Uh, and then in conjunction with replacing the water heater and tanks, uh, I can't read that far. Uh, 40, almost 4,700 would be a deduct here because they wouldn't have to do any work on those. Um, and then cafeteria overhead doors, um, if we don't do them, that's a deduct, or do them, that's a deduct of 2,600. And then replacement of cooling tower, again, there's, if we replaced it, there'd be a, about a $3,500 upcharge mm -hmm. addition. And kind of summarizing where we're at then the items in yellow are the items that you feel as an administrative team they're related to educational um, you know impact those are the items that if we were going to make a that's the 157,000 correct that's the 157,000 that we had originally been talking correct. about that we we're talking about possibly putting that back in um, and if I understand it right, between all three of the different aspects of the construction, back to the air conditioning, you're, you're probably looking at about, according to these bids, about 200 and, between 240 and $250,000 to install air conditioning in the gym. Is that correct? Is that, you'd add all three uh, together and yeah, that's- I, did, I didn't add them up, but I think you're probably close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's just, a big number. I'm just trying to get a picture of what yeah. it would cost. So, somewhere about 250, 275. Uh, <clears throat> How big of a deal is that? I mean, we've heard it for years that it's, you know, it's missing. It, you know, how big of a... What, the air conditioning in the gym? Yeah. But at a high school. And I think that's, that's really different because, you know, there's so many more activities there. Again, the big thing was if it rains, graduation's there without air, con air conditioning. The new high school has air conditioning in their gym. For the middle school, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. 
Do we know how it gets currently? Like, in the, the how how hot, how bad is it currently at the high school with the summer? Because I know my daughter's at the intermediate school, and she said, you know, it's brutal in August, September when they have gym in the middle school. How is that? Is it? I, I don't have any kids in the high school. Is it the same? I'm sure where it's the same. It's, you know, it's, it's I'm hot. sure it's the same. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, are, but, and I don't think the middle school goes, help me out for Mesa Middle School here. I don't think the middle school currently goes outside much for a gym. Because where would they go? Yeah. And I think part of that is because they just don't have a place to go. Yeah. That's that's close to the gym. That's close to where this has all. We have all the we have the we have the stadiums going to be right there. They're going to be able to go out on the stadium field. They're going to be able to go out on the practice fields if they want. They can go out when it's <coughs> muddy on the stadium field because it's not muddy. So um, it might not be as big of an issue as it that's is. That's just what I'm thinking. I don't think it's going to be that huge of an issue because of the fact that they they're going to have the stadium. They're going to have their practice fields where they don't have access to that now. It's just. It's just a long, you know, a long way to get there. And you're going to have three, three, three grades versus four, so you're talking fewer kiddos also. Any other questions from anybody? Okay, thank you. Okay, we're at our first public comment period. This is for items on or off of the agenda. If you have anything you would like to comment on, please come to the microphones and state your name and address for the record. Okay, Board President's communication. We did have an executive session prior to this meeting to discuss uh, various personnel matters uh, and uh, matters related to the building project. Uh, so with that, we will move into our committee reports. The first one is the Comprehensive Plan, Curriculum, and Professional Development Committee. Mr. Glauder, Mr. Mrs. Herman and Mrs. Maley. All right. Um, obviously, it was a, a shortened uh, committee meeting, so we didn't get through uh, everything uh, on our agenda for that. But we did start out the, eve or the evening with a presentation by uh, Mrs. Ferguson and the other kindergarten teachers at La or, I'm sorry, Dover Elementary School uh, who were piloting an ESGI system, which I did not Educate, it's called it's educational software for guided instruction. Um, and, and, and the good thing about this program is Mrs. Ferguson actually brought this to Dr. Maloney and Mrs. Kroom uh, asking to pilot uh, this program. And what it is is an online platform uh, that includes a variety of early learning assessments such as letters, numbers, etc. And it allows the teacher to do quick one-on-one -on -one assessments run reports for analysis to target like student weaknesses, uh, has a, a, a bunch of different resources and reports that help to improve uh, parent communication. One of the things that Mrs. Ferguson said about this program is everything that we're using currently in the district isn't really set up for kindergarten because it's, it's its own special um, set of circumstances there. Um, so this was actually, uh, developed by a kindergarten teacher. Um, so they've, they've been using it since the beginning of the year and uh, they are reporting uh, phenomenal success with this. Uh, the students uh, seem to be very happy with it. They're able to have, uh, see the student progress in front of them. It, it, it generates all kinds of reports uh, that they can use. Um, and, and currently, like I said, Dover Elementary Kindergarten and first grade teachers and one teacher from each of the other elementary buildings are, are using it so far. And so uh, they are, are asking us to allow them to uh, purchase this, this program uh, for next year for the entire, across the entire district. Uh, and I believe Dr. Maloney is, is in pretty much in agreement that, that we're, we need to, to move forward with this program. Let's see, uh, we talked very briefly um, about the curriculum coming up for board approval in February and that's for the um, AP calculus classes, the honors calc, uh, AP statistics, probability and statistics, and trigonometry. So you'll be seeing that coming up for uh, approval in the 
um, February meeting. Federal programs, the only thing we really talked about real quickly was, um, and the federal programs deal with all your art title programs, um, but because we ran out of time, we just uh, wanted to just go over Title IV, and that's the student support and academic enrichment grants, of which we receive about $43,000 uh, for that program. And as part of that, uh, we had a um, Mr. Mestrilli mm -hmm. uh, from the intermediate school came in and gave us a, um, a, a sample lesson of how he teaches his STEM uh, program to the, all the seventh and eighth graders. And we got to make these cool uh, straw rockets and then he actually, we had a, um, a, um, a launcher and we were able to launch our, um, our straw into the wall. So. <laughs> and we did not have any fun with that at all. <laughs> So, and, and pretty much so that's all that, that we were able to get through uh, this evening. Okay, questions for Mr. DeLauder. Okay, capital projects, Mr. Deshaux. I believe Dave said he had some pictures to show us. All right. Okay, this is the January. We haven't talked for two months, so um, some of these are pictures are a little old, but this is how the refrigerator and freezer came in for the new high school in these crates and uh, panels. So you can see the panels in this crate here on the right side of the picture. Um, they started setting them up, and um, this is just uh, part of the front view when you're looking at them of the refrigerator and freezer. Uh, this is the inside. Uh, as they're putting them up, there's when they're finished. Uh, still in the kitchen, they're starting to put the hoods up above the cooking areas. Um, this is uh, actually back near the uh, uh, the gymnasium area here. So, putting some walls up. Um, this is the corridor that's in front of the auditorium and where the kids will sit to have lunch and uh, common area. So they're starting to put that up. You can see it uh, here in, in the back. This is the gymnasium entrance here, these two big doors. Uh, and this is the going up towards the front. This is the pool area up here. And then right above uh, on the left-hand side of this picture is the corridor that goes in front of the auditorium and cafeteria and natatorium. There's another shot of the same thing. You can kind of see the, the gym there and putting this up. This was the, the uh, auditorium. Uh, this is when we first started laying it out, and we've got the you know the stone on the on the ground. <coughs> this was when we did the orchestra pit. We started doing the pit here, and we still don't have the the rest of the stage poured here. And this is all open. We're just really getting ready to do the wall here. Um, just another view of of the stage area. So this steel area here you see in the front, that orchestra pit underneath that. So we poured, started pouring concrete. Um, some days it was pretty darn cold in there, but we poured um, and did it in sections. One section at a time. There's some flat sections and then there's some tapered sections. So this is once we had all the sections poured, this is kind of what it looks like. You have a flat section up here and a flat section in the middle and then these tapered sections in between. Um, this is actually standing um, this is kind of where Wayne will sit to operate the auditorium stuff, the lights and the sound. He'll sit up in this little uh, crow's nest, I want to call it. So I'm actually up there, and you're looking right at the stage. So um, if any of you were there and saw pictures when it first started and it didn't look that big, it looks big now. So um, question, this is question on that, if I might ask, how, how big is the stage compared to our current stage in the, at the high school? Is it? You know, I don't know offhand. It looks a lot bigger. <laughs> I'll just say it that way. It looks a lot bigger. Um, this is the orchestra pit. I'm actually in the pit looking towards the stairs. There's stairs over here, and behind where I'm standing is, is or I might be standing in it, I'm not sure, but is the uh, 
wheelchair lift to get handicapped individuals in and out if we need to. Um, this is just another, I'm actually underneath the stage, so the stage is over top of me, and there's a, a steel beam right here. Um, that's the lowest point in the orchestra pit, and if I stand down here and put my hands straight up, I can just barely touch it with my fingertips. So it's very high, it's probably about nine feet or so to that. Um, this is the stage looking towards the, um, where that little backhoe is down here, or uh, digger is, that is the scene shop area where they can build the scenes and then that door will be that large so they can actually bring a scene in uh, if they need to, if they build it out there, they can wheel it in. Um, this is uh, just, I'm standing in front of the stage now looking back so you can kind of get concept of how large this is. Um, this is the area I was telling you about where um, Wayne will be way up here and this will look different in a couple minutes, but uh, that's the crow's nest. And this, this area here is uh, where the seats get more of like stadium type seats. <laughs> so to, to fill that in and make them look like stadium, it's all styrofoam. And I know that sounds funny, but that's what they fill it in with. So it's all styrofoam. It's a foot thick. It's four by eight sheets, and that's what's stacked up here. So we put styrofoam in there, and we make little steps out of it like this. And then we come along, we put steel in the front of it, and then we, and you can see the steel here, and then we pour concrete in, and that's what it looks like when it's all finished. Um, this is from the top looking down, and this area up here, if Wayne's watching, I know he is back there, this is where his control center is. Uh, it's kind of neat when you're up there. Uh, uh, so, uh, This is uh, one of the shops. This is actually a metal shop, and these are uh, air scrubbers uh, hanging from the ceiling here and they have these hoses coming down. This will be for over, if they're going to do any welding, uh, cutting with a torch, uh, maybe grinding metal or something. We want to get that contaminants out of the building, or out of the air, so the kids aren't breathing. That's what these do. There's uh, six of them in this room altogether. Uh, this is uh, the start of uh, the uh, auxiliary gym and the locker rooms for the, for the gymnasium, which they're just about done now. Um, this is a picture of um, graphics, graphic arts. This is a starting picture. Uh, there's a, it's actually two rooms. Or one room is for where they do the printing, and then this room up here is where they do the computer uh, CAD stuff. And then there's another room way up there, that's the TV studio. Uh, same picture, just a little bit further along. We've got the ceiling painted here. We didn't have the ceiling painted a minute ago. Again, this is looking the other way. Um, and this was today. They have the floor poured. Uh, this was wet when I was up there, so I didn't walk on it, but the floor is poured. Um, and it, you know, it's, I think it looks nice. And if you look in the ceiling here, you can see, I'm losing it here. Um, they actually have the ceiling grid in up here. So we're moving right along. This is a classroom. Um, so these are in various stages depending on where you're at. Most of the second floor is a little bit further along than the first floor, uh, but almost every room has whiteboards and tack boards up right now. They have the light switches installed. They've got the, um, most, almost every room has the ceiling grid and the lighting. It's, it's up, it's not hooked up yet electrically because we still don't have permanent electric in the building, but it's there. Um, so they're, we're moving, moving right along. This is another picture of a classroom. Just different view. Um, this is actually the CNC lab. Uh, Jason, this is the wood shop over here, and this is the CNC lab. And I took this picture to show you. One of the things is there's a classroom above this. Um, so to keep noise from going up, uh, they ins we installed a, a grid work on the bottom of the trusses, and we put six inches of rock wool insulation above that and two layers of 5 8 inch drywall below that to keep noise from going up. So we have, in this case, we're trying to keep noise from going up and on the other side where Graphics Lab is, we did the exact same thing but we're trying to keep noise from coming down so the noise won't carry back and forth. Just another shot of a classroom with the accent wall. <coughs> Floors are going in. This was, uh, I actually took this one today. Um, this is one of probably a half dozen rooms that have the flooring installed. Uh, it's a little dusty yet. We didn't clean it, but you know the flooring's installed. Um, and this is a science lab. We have casework on the walls. The science peninsulas are going in. So 
we're moving right along. This is just a, a different science lab, but you can, this shows you the, uh, the, the peninsulas here on the side uh, and the lab here. It didn't come out as clear as I wanted it to, but there's drawers and what have you underneath there. So uh, this is teacher station. It's not quite in the right location, but it was sitting there, so I thought I'm going to take a picture of it while I'm, while I'm here. But that was the teacher's uh, station up front. And I noticed in the back of that there is a section for um, the interactive television. Interactive panel. I, I knew I was going to get it wrong. So, um, this is actually on the first floor, and art room is to either side of this. And this is the first showcase that's finished. I'm now in the gymnasium, and I'm up on the running track. So this kind of gives you a view of the running track. Now, this was actually taken before the the roof was on. That's why the wall looks so funny back here. It's actually wet, um, but um, they have all the steel work done around here. And uh, this is just another shot of the same thing, so, uh, but it goes all the way around the top there. Uh, this was uh, Tuesday. Um, we got 10 of these units in, and um, to give you an idea of handling, what they did is they came two to a tractor trailer, and they took them off the tractor trailer and put them on a smaller truck so they could get them into the site. They couldn't get the tractor trailer into the site, so they actually had to load them on another truck to get them back to the site. And they were they're pretty big so they're lifting them up on the roof here and that crane back and all that mud it was a little frozen that day so um, this is just a shot of the roof just to give me an idea how many penetrations are in this roof it's a lot I mean we've got fan exhaust fans and I'm actually up on top of where the science labs would be so there's a lot more exhaust stuff going on up there than than most areas that's just another shot of the roof your rooftop units um, so it got cold this week. This is probably the coldest week we've had so far this year. And so we, they started building tents. So there's actually scaffold underneath here and they put this, uh, vis queen on top of them and they clip it fast to the scaffold, uh, and they heat it in there while they work so they can, so they can continue to lay brick and block. Um, and this is, um, I'm standing on the roof of the ag shop and I'm looking towards Intermediate Avenue and this is the driveway as, as it will come into the school when it's finished. Um, they have it ready for blacktop in this picture. So this will be grass over here, this will be grass over here, driveway will come in here and underneath me is three garage doors and then the little area over here to the left, you can see just a little wedge of it behind that pile of stone, is the beginning of the greenhouse. And that, I think, is my last picture. Any questions? There's a lot that's happened just since the last time I was there, less than a month ago. <laughs> that's a nice surprise. Dave, are, are we on schedule pretty much? We're probably about three or four weeks ahead right now. Okay. So, far as anything going wrong, we're absolutely still. But, yeah, we're. And they're doing this during school hours? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are taking students away from the area, so there won't be any classes with music, there won't be any classes in the um, locker rooms, there won't be any classes in the shop. So it will be a good 110 feet of basically showing these students what we're doing and where they're at. And we're going to do the critical separation work. We're going to know when we put stuff down. Thank you, Dave. Okay, anything else, Mr. Just show from the nope, committee? that was Sorry. everything. Okay. So at this point, we move on to uh, the middle school bid acceptance uh, process. So I'm going to read a rather lengthy motion, uh, and then we can have some discussion around that. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to award bids for the Dover Area Middle School Additions and Renovations Project to the lowest responsible bidders identified below 
and authorize Crabtree, Warball, and Associates to issue letters of intent to award, generate construction contracts, and issue notices to proceed. Uh, number one, general construction contract to ECI Construction. Number three, HVAC construction contract to Myco Mechanical. Number four, plumbing construction contract to Myco Mechanical. And number five, electrical construction contract to Mid-State Mechanical. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions and discussion? That is the, the basically the base bid without the alternates, correct? Okay, Mrs. Benko. The motion carries. Okay, moving on to facilities and safe and supportive schools. Mr. Rawhauser. Okay, I have a short report here. Public comment, none. Policy review, there will be policies that the committee will need to examine in the future, but we are not there yet in the policy review process. Training possibilities for law enforcement. Law enforcement is asking permission to use our buildings outside of school hours for training. Training possibilities for staff. Short and detailed at this time, but we are looking ahead to provide school safety training for all faculty and staff probably when we come back to school in the fall. This is essentially important because the opening of the building and the staff and students are not familiar with. Adding training discussion to we need planning train that we need to include students due to the fact that some students could have experience with past trauma that could be triggered with practice and drills. Building safety. Buildings are getting a new check-in system, the Vista system, the new system. This is a system that the visitors must use when checking in for each building. That's it. Questions for Mr. Rawhauser. Okay. Human and Fiscal Resources, Mr. Cook and Mrs. Brinton. Um, out of several items, uh, Ms. Benko gave us a, a first look at the proposed uh, budget for 2021. Um, went over some details, some, some thoughts, plans, ideas that are being presented. Um, they're actually very, very far ahead of schedule. Uh, as you may recall we had talked about trying to bump up the schedule this year so that the final approval could be earlier than than usual uh, and the reasons for that were many but uh, one of the big ones is because of recruitment of, of teachers uh, the earlier you know what you need the better potential pool are out there so the intent all along this year was to bump up the timetable and even beyond what the original plan was for this year, you're even further ahead than what you had anticipated. So long and short of it is that there is great potential that we may be getting uh, a, a vote coming up as early as next month to preliminarily approve our budget for 2021. So coming up in our board meeting in February, we will be given a presentation to the full board of what that looks like what is planned for the, you know, the positives, the, the additions, the, the steps that, you know, the, the people that are going to be needed, the staff members increase, whatever. And, uh, and then uh, next planning meeting night, which would be the following Thursday, their intent is to preliminarily approve our budget for 2021. Uh, and that would make it, you know, public for public view then, and then hopefully I'll be able to finally approve it in March. So that could be as much as two months ahead of where we typically are, um, you know, at that stage. So um, Ms. Spanko went over some of her thoughts on it. Um, 
as usual, there is a deficit in it. Um, again, there's, there's some things that have been identified as major needs. There's some plans to use some uh, reserve funds to try to balance the, the deficit there. Um, and so she'll be going over that in, in greater detail coming February. Um, we had a very brief discussion about policy 610, which is on our consent agenda tonight regarding the bids, uh, bid uh, policy that we have. Um, every year we have to approve the updated numbers that, that the, that's federal, correct? Federal guidelines um, require certain thresholds to, that stimulate how we have to handle certain bids and that sort of thing. So this comes up every year and uh, tonight's that's on the consent agenda. We also had a presentation by our music department uh, outlining the need for new band uniforms for, for next year. Uh, the current band uniforms are uh, 13 years old um, and some of them are uh, being held together um, maybe figuratively and literally by a thread uh, and they are obviously uh, you know they had a very good useful life 13 years out of a uniform is pretty good and uh, they are in need of, of uh, replacement uh, so the music department came and uh, presented um, uh, a proposal for a company to replace those. There will be a little bit of change in the proposed uniform as far as uh, colors and that, I mean, it's still the same colors, but a little bit different design than what we're currently used to. Um, the, the cost uh, of that is going to be around 90, between 94, 95,000, somewhere in that range, I believe. Um, and um, the company that is uh, putting that proposal together and it would manufacture needs about a six month turnaround. So with that in mind, uh, we're gonna have to act on this fairly quickly. Uh, so look for something to come our way next month uh, regarding that to, uh, to place a, a commitment on that. Um, and then it's, it's also good to note that, you know, the number of students that are currently involved in that program is is a large percentage of, of students and it's getting larger at the high school so uh, there is anticipation of a, possibly as many as 30 additional students that will be making the transition from our current intermediate school to the high school program uh, actually 50 some but then there's about 30 I think it was 58 and 30 was 30 seniors and 58 coming in so about net 30 additional students so the need is definitely there uh, so look for that to come our way in February uh, to, to vote on. So is there anything I missed that? This is Britton, Sir Eifert. Just on the uniform thing at the end there, you mentioned the numbers coming up, and that's one of the key issues with the uniforms themselves is there aren't enough uniforms. You know, we bring another 30 kids up to the high school. We don't have uniforms for them uh, to wear. Um, Mr. Bradshaw mentioned that every single uniform that we own was on the stage at the last concert. So, um, yeah, that, that's a key aspect of this. And they are in sad shape, you know, having seen them up close and personal and have a wife who works on these things, they're, they've lived a good life. So, right. well, I and, think I think, something, oh, sorry, go ahead. and I think we wanted to mention too that I, I know Jim budgets each year for athletic uniform replacements because I believe they're on a five-year cycle too. You know, you, you don't want to wear wrestling uniforms for too long, you know, stuff like that. Um, so there's a rotation in that cycle too, you know, on that, on that piece. That's kind of what I was gonna say. Um, and when, I, when we see this price, we have to keep in mind that typically the other, the other uniforms are every five years. And these are, you know, if you round up 15 years. So, the, the other sports have had three, essentially three different, you know, expenses, whereas this is just one. So I think whenever we're thinking about that, that we need to keep that in mind. The question was raised about our booster organizations and what role they play in, in this type of an investment. Uh, and as is the case in sports athletics, you know, the booster organizations do a, do a great job of helping fill the, the peripheral needs this is kind of a, a foundational need 
for that program. Uh, but uh, in the case of like the music boosters, they're filling, they're, they're funding some of the uh, protection for these uniforms uh, when, when suit, yeah, things like that. And in the case of the athletics, they're doing some of the peripherals as well. So everybody's kind of contributing a part to try to make, you know, these, these costs uh, achievable uh, and not too much of a burden to one, one way or another. So unfortunately, you know, it, it, a, a larger group like this, when you have to turn around the uniforms for it, it becomes a higher dollar amount. Uh, so it's maybe gives you a little bit of indigestion at the time, but like, like you said, 13 years, that's, it, it shows that there's a lot of care being put into them to get that many years out of them. So fortunately, we're just at that point where we do need to do something. Any questions? Okay, we will move on now to our consent agenda. We do have a consent agenda tonight, so, oh yes, we do have an appointment, I'm sorry. Under Human and Fiscal Resources, um, we do have an appointment for a part-time custodian position, so at this time I'd like to entertain a motion to approve Emma Poff as part-time custodian. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussions? Uh, yes, I will be abstaining from this vote due to she is a uh, stepdaughter. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Mrs. Benko. motion carries. Now we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, so at this time I'd like to entertain a motion to approve all items listed under the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions or discussions on any of these items? Is there anything you wanted to touch on Mrs. Cream or Mrs. Benko? I'd like to touch a little bit. I'd like Brad to come up and talk a little bit about the portable radio lease agreement, if you wouldn't mind. No. Hello. As far as the portable radios are concerned, these are the radios that our building aides use, uh, principals, assistant principals, deans use on a daily basis to communicate with each other within their building. Uh, radios were purchased prior to me even coming here. I can't tell you how old they are. Um, we're replacing batteries left and right. We have radios that are dying. Um, there are different makes and models that have been purchased throughout the different years. What the goal of this is, is to purchase bulk radios by 10 per building, including admin, because right now we have no spare radios. Um, it, should there be an emergency, daily use, what have you. Uh, in addition, it would put a, what they call a base station at the new high school. So we actually build our own radio system. Right now we are currently leasing the radio tower space uh, for, say, building aids or whomever. This would actually make it in our own um, system so we don't aren't paying that re monthly recurring cost uh, what we propose is a five-year lease program uh, that way of course it brings down the cost of the radios uh, every single year thank you yes um, w with these radios can we then communicate building to building yes with these? is it on a, like a, on a repeater system yeah it'll be on the that's what the, con the base station would be is would be a repeater so then we can actually communicate. Right now, I know the principals come over here with their portable radios. Some can talk, some can't, just depends. Uh, this would ensure that we pretty much, I don't wanna say it's gonna be perfect, because no radio system is perfect, um, but it would be a lot better than what we currently have today. And then now, will that have a maintenance? Uh, yes, there is a maintenance as association. As part of that? Yeah. Okay. Other than just standard wear and tear sure. stuff. Sure, yeah. understood, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Anybody have anything? Okay, hearing none, Mrs. Benko. The motion carries, okay. Any other comments or observations from our board members tonight? OK, 
Okay, then we have our last public comment period for items on or off the agenda. If you have anything you'd want to comment on, please come to the microphones. Okay, with that, our next meetings, Tuesday, February 18th, is our regular board meeting at 7 p.m. And then Thursday, February 20th, we have our board committee meetings at 6 and our board planning meeting at 7. So if there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? All in favor, yes? Yeah. Yes, we're adjourned. Thank you.